Mountains will crumble, forests will burn, ice sheets will break. All of this can be used to your advantage in the chess-like fight against the kaiju known as the Vec. Into the Breach is an incredibly engaging, challenging, fun and meticulous turn-based micro-tactics game that makes it super easy to get in and out quickly due to its short matches and relatively quick games. Its condensed, varied and ultimately deterministic combat is almost flawless as far as I'm concerned, but let's dig into the game in more detail to see exactly why. Made by the same people behind FTL, Into the Breach mainly takes place on a simple 8x8 square grid, where your squad of 3 mechs engages in asymmetrical combat against larger groups of giant insect-like kaiju called Vec. What you need to understand about the combat here is that the end goal isn't always the complete destruction of the enemy, nor that it is about dealing direct damage to them either. Instead, the combat mechanics are focused on manipulating the locations of the enemies so as to make them miss their targets or even better, hit their own. Let them fight. This is possible because your turns differ from enemy turns. You can do what you normally expect to do on your turn, move your mechs and perform an action. Which, by the way, once you perform the action, that's where the mech stays. However, when it's the enemy's turn, they will position themselves and telegraph what they'll attack and how on their next turn. And this is going to be what you plan your actions around and how you can best shift the enemies around the map to avoid any damage coming to the civilians living on each map. Because that's what each fight ultimately boils down to. Keeping the people in the building safe because they represent your global health bar, illustrated as the grid power. If you lose enough buildings for it to reach zero, that timeline is lost and you have to jump back in time, taking only one pilot with you. And while pilots aren't crucial, they are important. Because they are the ones who gather experience and develop up to three useful abilities. Mechs can be used without pilots, but it is ideal to try to keep them alive because of these abilities, which can range from increasing the health of mechs to improving grid defense to many others. Crash and burn. Crash and burn. The mech's health, movement and damage capabilities can be enhanced by the use of energy cores, which can either be found in randomly spawning temporal pods or you can purchase them at the end of each successful island clearing. Likewise, you can purchase different types of add-ons for your various mechs that do any manner of weird, interesting and very situationally useful things. While you may lose the game if all mechs in a squad are destroyed, you can still advance as long as one survives. The other two will be up and running for your next mission, but you will have lost the pilots. You start off with a squad of very basic but different mechs each featuring their own movement range and specific abilities meant to introduce you to the game's combat mechanics. But as you play the game, and the more you understand how the game is played, you'll gain achievement points and be able to unlock different mech squads, each of them with very specific ability themes. The missions are time limited, on average 5 turns, and this allows the game to be a very quick but also satisfyingly deep experience when you have 15 to 20 minutes worth of time and you want to get some gaming in. Despite what you might think, the game isn't just about giant robots fighting giant insects. It also features a strategy layer with some very basic resource management, but all of it is in service of your cross-temporal outfit fighting the Vec. Missions will only offer rewards as long as their bonus requirements are met and this will vary from not taking any mech damage to not taking any energy grid damage to killing a certain amount of vec and many more making each mission a different sort of challenge. You'll need to weigh where your limited resources will have the greatest effect. Thankfully the game allows you to test out possible purchases in a simulation so you don't have to get a mech upgrade and then see if it works in a real stakes fight. But it is very hard in this game to have super buffed out units even if you're running a super lucky string of flawless victories. An absolutely terrific feature is the ability preview screen which will demo for you how an attack or ability works when you scroll over it with your mouse. This is useful not only for beginner players but also when you've been playing with the same mech squad for a while and you want to switch it up and have zero clue how a different squad works. You can undo your previous move at all times as long as it wasn't an attack and you will also be able to repeat a complete turn once per combat. Use this option wisely, it could make the difference between a perfect run and one with civilian losses. 
I need to address how the environment of each combat encounter map will heavily influence your tactics and how they will react to being trounced upon by gigantic robots and kaiju. There are four land masses still left on Earth, four islands, each of them with their own particularities which will add yet another layer to your tactics. Some maps will continuously shrink while some will enlarge, some feature teleporters or mines and some feature offensive units or buildings. You need to factor all of these into your calculations because they will affect the fight anyway, might as well use it to your advantage. At the beginning of the video I said the game is mostly deterministic and that's true. You decide what's going to happen knowing full well what the result will be for the majority of the game. There are however three areas that feature RNG, enemy spawn locations, enemy target choice and your grid defense percentage. The enemy spawn locations are arguably the least impacting because they will always have a limited area of the map where they can spawn from, just like you will always have a limited area of the map where you can place your mechs. The enemy target selection on the other hand is highly impacting, seeing as how their random approach to target selection can and will lead to occasional no-win scenarios or at least situations where you have no choice other than risk taking some grid damage. It can be annoying, seeing as how even a perfect run can be upended by some really crappy RNG towards the end, but unfortunately this is the nature of the game. At the same time, this is partly what makes it so engaging. You have to take the overwhelmingly good with the proportionally little bad. Keeping in mind that equally possible is to have turns where the enemies target none of the map buildings instead choosing to threaten your mechs. Those happenstances tend to be overlooked by most players because as humans we tend to focus on and remember the negatives, but they do happen with the same amount of probability. By the way, despite what you may think, the maps themselves are not procedurally generated. They were made by hand, but there's like 200 plus of them and you'll start recognizing them after you play for a while. The pixel art looks great, it has just the right amount of detail in order to properly show what it aims to illustrate. The animations are very well made and the choice to make the enemies giant insects helps our pattern recognition prime brains feel a sense of familiarity even though the graphics themselves are fairly low res. You can also change the color scheme of your various mech squads. For example, I tend to prefer to make them orange or yellow so that they pop easier. The game now comes with advanced edition features. These are optional extra types of enemies, missions, equipment and pilot abilities. I suggest you first play the game in its default state and get a good sense of how it plays before getting these options activated. You could also only add the extra equipment and pilot abilities to get a bit more variety on your side of things, but you do what you feel. Into the Breach gets a clear nonsense seal of approval and besides the desktop you can play it on most mobile devices through Netflix as well as on the Switch, which by the way also has a physical release set for 2023. But what about you, what do you think about it? Click the link on the screen if you wanna see some more turn based tactics games. I've been Steve Nonsense, I have a Patreon, thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video.